Now, unless you've been living under a rock the past few days, I'm sure you've heard of the whole GameStop, Reddit, Robinhood, and hedge fund situation. Is it true that Robinhood went out of their way to help their Wall Street hedge fund buddies while screwing over all their users? Well, some of the evidence points that way, but the answer is a little bit more gray than it is black and white. What exactly happened? Why did it happen? And how can you protect yourself in the future? All this and more in today's video. Hello and welcome to Stephen Carlson Show. I'm Stephen Carlson. I'm a tech entrepreneur real estate investor, author, YouTuber, paramedic, and Bonnie and Clyde. Well, they, Bonnie and Clyde were in the studio. They went downstairs. This is not a video I was planning on making for today, but I feel there is so much disinformation and misinformation about this topic that I felt that I just needed to make a video to set the record straight. Please help share this video with others so that your friends can see this. Make sure you smash the like button so that it helps the YouTube algorithm push this video to more people so that everyone can learn exactly what happened. Before I go any further, as my regulars will know, I have a team of outstanding lawyers that I keep chained up in the basement and Clyde, he keeps them from escaping. The only problem with these lawyers, they get a little bit rowdy whenever I make a video and the only way to calm these lawyers down is to give a quick disclaimer. This is for entertainment purposes only. These are my personal opinions. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a tax advisor. This is not legal financial tax advice. You get to the point. This is also normally where I would plug Weeble here. You know, that promo where you get two free stocks if you deposit $100, link below. But since I'm talking about one of their competitors in this video, I guess I'll skip that ad. Instead, how about you check out the other video that I have pinned down below where you can get the equivalent of 40 free lottery tickets every single week. Okay, enough of that, out of the way, now to today's video. Be forewarned, this will be a little bit longer than usual, but please watch all the way to the very end as YouTube grades content creators based upon how long you have watched. First, a little backstory with the Wall Street hedge fund elites and how they manipulate the market to make billions of dollars very quickly. Last March, as the country began to panic about the arrival of a strange new coronavirus from China, a billionaire called Bill Ackman went on television in an attempt to make America even more afraid than it already was. Our economy may be done at this point, he said. Over, dead, not coming back. Bill Ackman went on like this for 28 full minutes. Terrified CNBC viewers watched slack-jawed as he ranted. Here's part of his performance. Hell is coming. This was a feeling like I've never had, like there's a tsunami coming, right? The tsunami's coming in, you feel it in the air, right? The tide starts to roll out, okay? And on the beach, people are playing and having fun like there's nothing going on. And that is the feeling I've had for the last two months. Okay, and, and my colleagues at work, okay, thought I was a lunatic. We need to shut it down now. America will end as we know it, okay, I'm sorry to say so, okay, unless we take this option. Bill Ackman was afraid, and he wanted you to be afraid. Ackman was especially frightened for the future of Hilton Hotels. Hilton Hotels, Ackman proclaimed, quote, is going to zero along with every other hotel company in the world. Every hotel is gonna be shut down in the country, every one. Talk about scary. But in the end, not for Bill Ackman. Not long after that appearance, we learned that Ackman's firm had made more than $2 billion from trading in the stocks that many people believed he had pushed down with the hysterically dire predictions you just saw. This is a very common tactic in the market for analysts to go onto the news and claim X stock will drop in value. Then they're secretly buying up millions of dollars worth of that stock after the price drops. Simply put, if you can convince people to sell millions of shares of Clyde's Dog Bones Incorporated, pushing its share value from $100 down to 10, then you can quickly come in and swoop up all those shares at the lower $10 price. The act of purchasing those stocks pushes the value back up and you can very easily get it back to $100 again. Within minutes, your manipulating scheme just made you $90 per share. Multiply that by a few million shares, and it was not a bad day. This is what many of the hedge funds do every single day. I'm not saying it's right, I'm not saying it's wrong, I'm not saying it's legal, I'm not saying it's illegal. I'm just saying this is what happens. On top of that, you add in the ability to short sell a stock, or simply put, the ability to bet that a stock is going to go down in value. 
This allows the investor to profit as the value drops. Then, once they swoop in and purchase it all for pennies on the dollar, they're able to profit on the upswing as well. This starts to get into the sticky waters of laws and regulations, but we're going to gloss over all that and just say that it happens all the time. And rarely, if ever, do the regulation bodies actually get involved. The Wall Street fat cats make billions, and nobody really cares. This brings me to what happened with GameStop. A group of independent investors under a Reddit group Wall Street Bets discovered that multiple hedge funds were shorting GameStop stocks, including many others. So these independent investors decided to stick it to the hedge fund operators and collectively buy millions of shares of GameStop, causing the value to go from $19 a few weeks ago to over $470. This very quickly panicked the hedge funds because they had bet hundreds of millions of dollars that GameStop was going to go down in value. But because the value went up, it ended up costing them an estimated $19 billion just to make up for the loss. Okay, now that we kind of know what took place, and I know it took a little while to get there in the video, but I really wanted to cover the foundation so we were all on the same page. Now, what does all of this have to do with Robinhood? Well, long story short, Robinhood stopped the purchase of GameStop and 13 other stocks within their platform. This quickly caused speculation to run rampant across social media and major media outlets that Robinhood was purposefully halting the stock purchase just to protect their Wall Street investor friends. What we're calling short squeeze stocks, they're going straight up especially GameStop, now up 75%. That's volatility, Bed Bath & Beyond, BlackBerry, all the rest of them on the upside this Friday morning. Look at them go. Here is Barstool Sports' Dave Portnoy. Got him on the show, and here he is. Dave, you call Robin Hood the biggest fraud of them all. Put them in prison, you're saying. Okay, make your case. Go ahead. Well, they intentionally cratered uh, a bunch of stocks, a lot of the ones you just mentioned, the short seas stocks, by not letting people buy it, only selling it. There was only one outcome, crater the stock. Uh, they basically stole money from their own clients. They knew that was going to happen to help the hedge funds basically cover. Is there proof of that? If they do the investigation right, I'm sure there will be. But, you know, it's one thing to say we're worried and you freeze the market and you can't buy or sell, and if people want to liquidate at what it is, fine. But to intentionally crater the stock at the expense of all of your customers, well, that's criminal in my mind. That's flat-out criminal. Okay, let me put the other side of the argument, because there, there is another side to this, I think. If, if Robinhood had not restricted trading, they didn't have enough money for the clearinghouses to complete the trades. If you fail on a trade, you've got a cascade of failures all the way down the line. And that is a financial crisis. I put it to you that, that Robinhood had to do what it did when it did it. And by doing it, they were, in fact, representing their own best interests and, to some degree, the best interests of their own investors. So... Vlad, who went on CNBC yesterday and was point blank asked, is there a liquidity issue, said no. After hearing this statement from Dave, I wanted to go directly to the source and hear precisely what the Robinhood CEO said. Blaine, then why did you do this? What, did, did the SEC call you and tell you you had to do this? Was there a problem inside the company in terms of liquidity, in terms of the amount of deposits that you had uh, to, to put it in, in front to the exchanges? What led to this? Sure, and let me let me explain exactly how this works. Um, oh, first of all, I want to address some of the misinformation that's been out there because there's a lot of it. Um, we absolutely did not do this at the direction of any market maker or hedge fund uh, or anyone we route to or other market participants. Uh, the reason we did it was because uh, Robinhood is a brokerage firm. Uh, we have lots of financial requirements, including SEC net capital requirements and clearinghouse deposits. So that's money that we have to deposit at various clearinghouses. Sounds to me, though, that you're suggesting that there was a liquidity problem uh, inside the firm. And, and my question about that then raises all sorts of new questions about whether there's a systemic issue 
uh, underneath the system and underneath the company unto itself. No, no, there, there was no li liquidity problem. And to be clear, this was done preemptively. So we did this proactively uh, and thousands of other securities remain tradable on the platform. Customers that held these positions um, were able to sell them. And we're doing what we can to allow uh, buying and to remove these restrictions in the morning. In all transparency, I did cut up that interview a little bit and kind of condensed it, but I cut it down to the essential parts. You, of course, can watch the full interview. The link will be down below. What I felt important here was when Vlad stated that he did not do this to help Wall Street, that they simply needed to comply with cash deposit requirements. And, however, this is what Dave Portnoy was commenting on when Vlad said, quote, there was no liquidity problems. Well, wait. So, if the issue was the clearinghouse deposits needing to be made, but then he said there was no liquidity problem? Well, I think, at least in my opinion, Vlad was trying to be kind of careful in his statements, and he ended up tripping up on his words. I'm not defending him, I just think that he wasn't used to being interviewed. My gut is that Robin Hood kind of saw the writing on the wall. And they realized that if they didn't do something soon, they would very quickly have the liquidity problem because they would not have the cash in the bank to actually cover the purchase of the stocks that the customers using their app were purchasing. So for this reason, they preemptively stopped trading to prevent a cascading issue throughout their system and the greater market as well. This brings me up to the next topic, and I promise I'm going to keep this quick because I know this video is getting a little bit long, but I sincerely appreciate you sticking through this far through the video. We're almost finished, I promise. Presuming that Vlad was being honest here, what does this say about the stock trading app industry? In fact, the entire online trading platforms as a general statement? If in the future there is a run on a specific stock, causing the price for whatever reason to increase dramatically? Is there enough capital in the entire system to cover such an exorbitant speculation? Right now, I don't think anyone really has the answer to this. This is all uncharted water. And at the moment, the trading world is kind of figuring it out as we go along. Now, there have been many calls from politicians from both parties to start investigations and add additional regulations but I think I'll save that discussion for another video. In summary, I think this was a great example of a group of smart individuals coming up with a new and unique way to make a profit. The only difference was that this was the unusual case where the outsider made the money instead of the insider Wall Street guys. And I love it. This is true open market capitalism at its finest. And I applaud them for this. Thank you very much for watching. Please make sure you click like and subscribe. Share this video with all of your friends. Let them see this. Let people know the truth of what's going on. There's not this massive conspiracy of people trying to shut down the independent traders. It's just the way things worked. Thank you, and I'll see you on the next one.